Hey everyone, in this video, I'll try my best to give you an overview of a general compiler design. So what's happening inside a compiler? So what's happening inside is you have a three segment uh, compiler is distributed in a three segment construction. So this is three segments made of three segments. The three segments that we'll be talking about are the front end, the mid end, and the back end. In the front end, what we are going to talk about, especially in this video, is we'll be talking more about lexical analysis, parser, and semantical analysis. So what's happening in front end is basically you have sets of instruction, sets of instruction that the user might be making for a particular, let's say, a program to run say it could be any kind of program perhaps uh, um, perhaps uh, adobe file okay so what's happening here is that the sets of instructions are needed the parser is responsible for the grammar of the instruction so it needs to make sure that the grammar is the one that's using the sets of instruction the semantic analysis what it does is the user creates the sets of instruction, the user creates the grammar, the semantic analysis. What it does, it takes the tokens from the lexical analysis and the parser to match that the grammar is appropriate to the set of uh, instruction that the user has made. Once this passes through and all these three conditions, first condition, second condition, and the third condition are appropriate to the front end, it optimizes this information. Once the information is optimized, the back end releases a .exe file, which is an executable file, which you can double click on it in order to run that particular program that we have been making. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about what a lexer is. Like I said, a lexical analysis is a process of converting a sequence of character into a sequence of tokens. So, if I were to say FOO foo is equal to 1 minus 3 times times 2. So, this is a power operator that we'll be using. This is for multiplication. And I'll just write this as a multi, but you know what it means. All right, so the lexical analysis for this would be foo is a particular variable that we have created. Equals is the assignment operator one is a number minus is a subtraction operator three is a number again and so is two however the multiplication is a power operator so this is the breakdown of sets of tokens that are um, used in the lexical scanner all right now let's talk about parser parser are basically something like a process of analyzing sequence of tokens to determine its grammatical structure. So what it means is that whenever a particular set of instructions like this, if we are talking about this, are used, the lexical will see itself whether it's a syntax free. If this happens to be syntax free, it's appropriate and it's passed through the synthetic analysis. All right, now we come to semantic analyzer. The semantic analyzer is a process of performing semantic checks, example, type checking, object binding, or perhaps checking whether the grammar is appropriately correlated with that of the instruction. So if I wanted to put that into a mathematical term, we would put that as sets, of token is proportional to the grammar introduced. All right. Now, what in this video I want to do is, even though I've just talked about these three things, these are major things that we need to consider before we move on to the next segments of our compiler design. So what I'm going to do is pull up a file. This is the one that I made. And I'm going to be showing you 
what we have been working on. All right, so in this, we are having two different science segments. And the way I'm going to show you is one, I'll be having, say, um, if I can just find an empty page to ex uh, show you an example. If I were to use this, all right, new. Okay, so what's happening here is we have two different sets of files, all right? One file and two files. This is what you saw here. The first set is sets of instruction. This one is a grammar. All right, now how the process works is what I'm going to be explaining you. So you have a .l file, which is a lexical analysis, all right, and a .y file, which is um, flex analysis, which is responsible for the grammar. Now, the way in this example, how we have considered is I've introduced something called LP and RP, which is nothing but tokens. So LP is supposed to represent left parenthesis, RP is supposed to represent right parenthesis. And I can go on further saying that, hey, if I use a box bracket, it should be uh, return, I should return box parenthesis, which is, this is the left one, so left box parenthesis, all right? And this is how we can do this. And since we added the left one, we can go ahead and add a right one as well. So this, and then this will become return right box parenthesis. All right, and I'm just gonna give some space to it so it looks clean but you don't really have to so here we see that it's being segregated into three different segments okay let me just go ahead and save that and now what's going to ha be happening is what's happening here is that you have uh let me just show you so basically what we are doing is that here we are separating you have percentage signs here, sets of instruction, percentage signs, percentage sign, instruction, percentage, percentage. All right, and you can see that over here. So you have a percentage here, percent, percent here, and then percent over here. So these are the three segments that it's been segregated. The first one is responsible for including the library that we'll be using. So here we'll be using different sets of tokens and characters. So we need to include a standard library, which has all this called the functions that we are, we are currently using. So the compiler knows what we are dealing with. The second one is including the matcher.tep.edge. So when you try to combine it, we need to make sure that it's using a appropriate compiler to do so. And technically, since the file name of this is matcher.l, we need to include matcher.tab.h. So if your file would say file, for example, then you would need to uh, add file.matcher.h and so on and so forth. All right. So this is what's happening. If you were to look at matcher.y, again, we see that we are segregating into four different sections. And here, four is basically, one, we include the library. We say that, hey, we should not face this kind of error, all right? The second one, when we are using, we are introducing the number of tokens that we have used. Here, if you have noticed, we have added two more instructions, so I'm just gonna add them. And the way I add them is percent token, and then I write LBP, and then again, percent token, 
L R B P. So these are the two different sets of instruction that we have added. All right. Now what's happening is here we have a grammar. The grammar follows that if I were to have, let me just go ahead and erase this first. If I were to have a matched content, all right, and then a match has content in it, so content can basically mean the parentheses that we are using. It could be left parentheses, right parentheses, box bracket, and all that. So we could have added a curly bracket as well, but for the demonstration, I'm just gonna leave that right now. So what's happening here is that we are introducing that, hey, when there's a content, print that content as this thing, and how that content is going to look is if you can have a left parentheses, so we might have a left parentheses, perhaps a term which is a number such as two, and then left parentheses. And since we have added this and this LBP and RBP, what we can do is say that hey, add add this over here as lbp term rbp that way once we save it we can have a term by itself as well so when a user who is trying to use this program writes any particular type of term without using the sets of parentheses that we have introduced here it's going to print out just the term as well without pointing out the error. If we want to remind the user saying that, hey, the term that you have used is correct, but you have not been using any sets of parentheses, what we can use is write a curly bracket, say print, printf, write, hey, there was no parentheses involved but it works fine all right so this is the term that if the user is executing the file gets all right now the factor here is just another term for a logic so it's using term factor and then factor has NPC say some user who is trying to when the program puts input the user does not put number nor is he using any sense of parentheses so any kind of random variable where the user enters such as a star or um, and signed or any kind of instructions that is not introduced it's going to return npc and npc is nothing that other than a dot which we have defined it in our dot l file all right so the last one is just calling out for the integer main but since we are not using that currently we can just leave it at it is and now what we can do is use our ubuntu program to execute this file